Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today, I got this classic towed in. Customer complaint is it won't go forward. It'll go in reverse, but if you put it in drive or any of the forward gears, it's like it's in neutral. It doesn't go anywhere. It's a 94 Lexus ES300. Or I'm sorry, 3000 V6. And it's a Texas car, so no rust. I think we've seen this one before in a previous video. But let's duplicate the customer complaint. Fires right up. 168,000 miles. Let's see. Yep, it engaged in reverse. Neutral. Drive, nothing. Low, two, power mode. Reverse works, drive does not. All right. Here we have the original owner's manual and look, lifetime oil and filter changes. Wow, that's service. In the owner's manual I found how to properly check transmission fluid level. Obviously that's where we're gonna start. That's the easiest thing to check and the most basic. So, check the level on the dipstick with the engine idling and the selector in the P position. Level should be in the hot or cool range according to the fluid temperature. See page 188 for additional information. Okay, let's go check the dipstick. Vehicle's running, it's in park, it's idling. Chirpy somewhere. Well, it's right there, it looks like, just below the hot level, but yeah, this stuff looks quite dirty. It's not red, it's like black. It doesn't smell too bad. It's definitely uh, not clean fluid. So, Where are we gonna go from here? So since the fluid level looks okay, I'm tempted to add like half a quart of fresh fluid just in case. You go on online, read some forums, people are like, yeah, I added half a quart of fluid and my Lexus drives like new. So that's the easiest thing to check before going deep into the diagnostics. I think that might be uh, the first thing to do. All right. Put in a funnel. And I have about a quart of the Valvoline synthetic here, and then we'll just add, I don't know, half a quart maybe. go. There's about half a quart. Alright, now we're right here. That's good. Let's see if it shifts. Again, don't get your hopes up.
Reverse works. Still no drive. Okay. So, the history of this vehicle, this problem has happened in the past, actually last winter. It happened like twice and I told her, you know, try, we put it in low and it actually moved and it drove fine all summer, like smooth, problem free, no slipping, no anything. And now it lost the forward gears again. So this sounds to me like a, uh, a control side issue, meaning maybe a little solenoid is sticking or something. Um, I'm not sure how much info we can get through like a scanner to see what the transmission's commanding the solenoids to do, but we need to do some research. So let's jump on all data and maybe take a quick peek at the forums and see if there's a, a silver bullet for this thing. All right, here we are in all data doing some research. General system description. 94 model years A541E. It's a revised version of the previous A540E. It has been uh, made to match the brand new 1MZ FE engine, the legend. Uh, adoption of electronically controlled transaxle with an intelligent control system from the previous electronically controlled transaxle system. Okay. Intelligent control system. Interesting. Well, the, not that much information there. We can read about the symptom simulation methods and see operation. Hmm. Your clutches, first gear, mechanical operation. Okay. Function of components. Wow, that's that's pretty awesome that they give you this much information here. Power from the engine transmitted to the input shaft, transmitted to the planetary gears. Operation of brake and one-way clutch. Mm -mm. Okay. I basically want to know is there a quick check to rule out electrical versus mechanical? Hydraulic control system. <clears throat> there are three solenoid valves on the body. Number one and number two solenoids are turned on and off by signals from the ECM to operate the shift valves and change the gear shift position. The SL solenoid valve is operated uh, to disengage the lockup. SLN solenoid valves operator signals from ECM to control engagement speed and reduce gear shift shock. Okay, so there's just three solenoids in here. Everything else is manual. Hmm. Uh, let's see, anything else? Electronic control system. The engine control module re reduces vehicle squat when the vehicle starts out in gear shift shock. Wow. Okay. Is equipped with a self diagnosis system which diagnoses malfunctions, warns the driver, and a fail safe system which makes it possible for the vehicle to continue functioning while the malfunction occurs. So we have our inputs, and we have our actuators. Construction. Sensors, ECM, and actuators. Yep. Okay. Arrangement of components. That's very, very helpful. You got your solenoid valves, your speed sensors up here. Direct clutch speed sensor. Interesting. Igniter, DLC. Two DLCs. Uh, uh, system diagram. That's it. Where where is the fail safe, you know, mode here? I want I want the description of it. Anything else? Service in system outline. Okay, so at least it describes gear shift operation. 
of the solenoids. So uh, first gear shift operation for second speed, for third speed, for fourth speed, lock up or drive circuit. Okay, so that's where we are. I'm tempted to plug in a scanner just to see what kind of data we can get out of this thing. Might be worth a shot. But at this point, we're just doing some research to familiarize ourselves with the system before taking any drastic actions. Is there a, what's the next easiest step? So, I found an interesting forum post here. Reverse, but no forward. Let's read. I've searched and found this to be... I found this to be a common training issue with no one being able to offer a cause. Well, hopefully, we will be able to offer a cause and <laughs> make a video on it. The car, 92 LS400, has been running fine for two days. All fluids are in good condition, normal levels. I gently sprayed the engine off using my water hose. Uh-oh, that's a no-no. And But used the rag to scrub it down. Missed it off again. I had another hose spraying the undercarriage. After that, I went to drive. I could only go into reverse, but no forward gears. So, cause and effect. The training's in neutral. No go. No codes either. Any ideas? Okay, so it actually rained here uh, quite a bit during the last few days. And, you know, there could be some uh, cause and effect here. Water and electronics don't like each other. So, and the last time it happened in the winters, I remember it was also really wet and slushy and salty. So that brings the question, could there be some water intrusion in the wiring or the ECU or something along those lines that could cause this issue? Um, again, let's start with a scanner, see where that takes us, and then do a visual inspection too. Alright, so for these old cars, what we want to do is manually input the VIN on the Varus. See VIN entry, and let's go JT8GK13 TX for Texas R004 2823. Alright, here's a screen you should see. Yep, it's correct. 94 Lexus, 3.0 V6. Okay. Engine, transmission, ABS, and airbag. So let's let's go for transmission. Connect DA4 cable under driver side dash and fuse panel. Okay, let's try that. All right, so it says under driver side dash in fuse panel. Hey, here's the fuse panel. Oh, cool. An OBD2 connector on a 94. Must be uh, getting close to that mandated year. All right, we got a beep. That's good. Pop the key in and explore. All right, here we go. Continue. Establishing our connection. All right, let's display codes. Current codes. <laughs> oh, two sensor circuit fault, bank one, sensor one. Now well, there's your problem, lady. It's an oxygen sensor. Uh, history codes. Mm hmm. Okay. Not much there. Let's try data. Oh man, the sun. Beautiful day today. Well, let's at least see if our park neutral safety switch 
it's showing the right gear position. So park, reverse, neutral, drive, no engagement. And nothing in low, second drive, nothing there. I'm a little disappointed in, it's not showing us the, the solenoid commands. Mm -hmm. Check mode, troubleshooter, that kind of sucks. What if we go to the engine? Yep, yep, P0130. Let's see what engine data we can get. Mm, we got all kinds of fuel trim stuff, misfires, park neutral switch, idle up intake, etc. Fires, STA signal, purge valve, ESV. Okay, so nothing to do with the transmission solenoids. Interesting. Well, what's next? Visual inspection, maybe unplug some stuff under the hood. Well, looking at this transmission, it's a little buried, but I think I found the connector that has those solenoids on it. And it's under the battery here, way down in there. I'm going to try to unplug it and see what happens. You can actually see it right, right here. Let me try to unplug it, see if we can... Uh, change something. All right, connector is unplugged. Let's see what happens. Wonder why the check engine light's not on this thing. Reverse, neutral. Uh-oh. Ooh, did that engage? Nope. I tried. Hear that clunk? So it's definitely clunkier. All right. OD off indicators blinking and the check engine light came on. Display codes. Shift solenoid A electrical, shift solenoid B electrical. So continuity is there, but we're we're still stuck stuck in the water here. Hmm. Alright, plug the connector back in. Nope, no beans. Well, that didn't really uh, show any conclusive results. Hmm. I mean, at this point, it really looks like an internal transmission problem. Maybe like on the silhouette, we can do a drain and refill. Maybe something's a little stuck in there, some check valve. 
All right, so we're not gonna give up yet. Let's read carefully in this gear shift operation. Okay, so um, this is the outputs here. Current is output to the electronic control tr transmission solenoids. When shifting to first speed, current flows from terminal S1 on the ECU to terminal 3 of the electronic control transmission solenoids to ground in continuity to the number one solenoid causes the shift. Interesting. So that solenoid, it looks like, is key in selecting first gear. For second speed, current flows from terminal S1 of the ECU to terminal 3 of the solenoid and from terminal S2 of the ECU to terminal 6 of the transmission solenoids. So then both 1 and 2 are energized and cause a shift to second gear. We have no first or second. So what's the common thread here? This solenoid, uh, the first one, from terminal S1 to terminal 3 on the ECU. So which one is that? S1, violet wire, terminal 3, there's the number 1 solenoid. Right next door is the number 2. So what I want to do is set up the Pico on both wires. You know, we'll, I guess, use a use a back probe and this connector is pretty easy to get to and then we can actually see you know I, the computer knows that if there's continuity or not it does not mean the solenoids aren't mechanically stuck and using a voltage or current waveform we can see if those solenoids are moving so my hope is one of those solenoids is just plain stuck and we'll see how much current they draw and if it's just a bad solenoid then you know that shouldn't be that difficult of a repair so we're hoping it's not like a, a major internal transmission problem which I mean if the car drives fine and then it just suddenly stops with no noise or slipping or anything it really seems like uh, you know a solenoid problem here well, popping off the dash cover here looking for this engine computer a, it is a reman unit. What is a reman computer doing in a Lexus? What's the history behind this? Under warranty. Interesting. But anyways, I found the connector with our violet and pink and blue wires. These are the two solenoids, so actually we can check them right here. Conveniently enough. And those are the only two I want to focus on right now. So we can do our checks right here instead of going under the hood and uh, messing around under, under there. And let's plug in the scope and shift some gears. Alrighty, we got the scope hooked up. Very nice, neat location. So channel one blue is on the violet wire. Channel two red is on the pink and blue wire right there and then the amp clamp I want to put around both violet and pink and blue wires like so we'll turn it on to the low amp scale so one volt will be 10 amps three channels third channel is the current all right Channel 1's already at 12 volts. Let's drop the time scale down here. I want oh, two seconds per division. Okay, let's do that again. And Let's do plus or minus 500 millivolts here. So 100 millivolts will be one amp. All right, so shut it off. Okay.
So can we already say that this, the first solenoid is uh, not moving? Can we or can we not say that? Ah, there is a pintle hump in the current, so that solenoid is moving. Ah, I was hoping it wasn't. <laughs> now wait a minute. Yeah, that's that's solenoid one. Now let's shift the gears and see what happens. So let's let's run it. So drive. Second low, no change, reverse, park, again, drive, so I wonder why in drive it drops and then it comes back up, interesting. And then in these gears, it, there's no difference. Ooh, you can see the red one actually went up for a second there. I what the logic is. All right, let's uh, let's explore. So right here. We can, so there's two events. Solenoid one, the blue trace, and then solenoid red, the red trace. Judging by the current, we should be able to see pintle humps when, you know, here the blue is on, and then it shuts off. Do we see any solenoid movement? Right there. I wonder why there's no voltage spikes when these solenoids are activated. Now the red one shuts off. Here the blue one shuts off and the red one and they they both turn on. So there's definitely some movement right there. How about when the red one shuts off? You see a little pintle movement, maybe. Hmm. I mean, that's see, it's two amps, so the it's drawing the right current. And they're both being energized. Whatever the strategy is, I'm just, uh, I want to see something definitive. Like when this red one turns off, you should have about the same type of pintle hump. You can see the voltage here drops down a little bit and then it comes back up. Same for the blue one. When they're both on, the current is twice as high as when only one is on, so they draw about one amp a piece. So, I don't know, at this point it looks like the solenoids are actually good. That's not good news for the owner.